Right, so in this case I want to illustrate something that caught me out recently and unfortunately I had to redo quite a bit of work because of it. And that is because I was silly when I started editing the profile of, of walls. Um, specifically these walls around the perimeter of the building over here. Uh, and you can see there's quite a few of them, the retaining walls. So I wasn't very impressed with myself when I found out, oops, I have to redo all of this again. All right. So hopefully I can save you the trouble and show you what the problem was. Um, and really, I suppose, overzealousness on my part, but uh, let me show you what I mean. Right, so we're all used to uh, creating um, uh, stepped foundations to make a wall fit below the surface. Over here you can see I've been uh, totally uh, over the top. And uh, typically how I handle these is I go to a uh, site level or a, a ground level view and go and create just a very short little section. Let's see, maybe I've already got one. There's one of the sections that I've got. And I can go and place that section over here. I drag it a little bit shorter and then I'm going to have a look at that wall and my typical sort of workflow is just to open that section to go and edit the profile of this wall and then to go and adjust it so that the foundation sits below the surface and that's all good and well alright so that's that's pretty straightforward uh, it's what Revit's really good at uh, if I look in 3D view as well then um, on architectural Uh, anyway. So, what I want to show you is that when you've got there you can see on the other side you can even go and manipulate this a little bit further so you get these um, foundations closer to the surface but without protruding through the surface. All right, So you can sort of minimize the amount of brick that you need on your on your walls and you can edit this profile in 3D as well. If you say edit the profile, you can go and edit this profile and at any time also when you edit the profile you can also um, reset the profile which is what I've done just now. Let's just see here. Okay, uh, there we go. All right. So let's look at this wall on the right hand side. Let me show you what I did. I was stupid. I did that move constraints and then I use the line tool to come in on the on the inside face is thinking that these walls are going to join and they don't now how do you edit this profile so that it joins automatically again and that's where I got a little bit stuck there eventually they join again all right so just be careful, uh, in some cases you might find that you have to reset the profile and if you reset the profile all these steps are undone and you then have to go and redo the way in which this wall is aligned. So just be careful of exactly how you align that that profile. But it looks like um, aligning the profile to the outside of the wall that does fix the problem as well. You can see that this wall is not joined once again. Just be careful, um, and if you get confused, align that side onto the outside of this wall over here. Or otherwise, reset the profile, in which case you're going to have to do these steps over again. And if you do work in a in a combined workflow, then you you would see these errors propagating through into your architectural drawing and every other drawing that is linked into. So it's not the it's not the best um, sit situation. That said, uh, now that you know that, let's hope that you don't get to go through the same uh, work uh, that I had to do to redo it. <laughs> Until next time. Cheers.